want to smoke around this. It's very dangerous <laughs> to blow up. Oh, God! Hola, amigos. Buenos dias. It's six something in the morning. I'm very tired, but um, you can kind of still hear the partying going on outside. It goes on the entire night. It doesn't stop until like seven in the morning, so it's, it's still party time out there. I do not envy the people partying this early. Today we're going to Guatape. Can't say words, right? I'm not sure how far away. Probably a few hours from here. Uh, apparently, there's this huge boulder mountain rock thing. That's what I'm excited about. Traveling in the pier. These are so squeaky. Actually, it's the heaviest day of my period. The two days that we could be going on a trip. We just happened to be going on the worst one. <laughs> so I'm taking some some iron energy today. It has B12 and vitamin C and folic acid and iron. So I uh, hope they don't die. <laughs> but when you're traveling and you have a period, when I do anyways, I like to rest on those two days because I get so tired. But today, that's not really an option. So we're gonna power through it with coffee and iron and see what happens, because I know it's gonna be a very physical day. But yeah, and my probiotics. going to climb that rock. Yeah, this book bag is very heavy. <laughs> like all my stuff in here. I need to find some sunblock. Leslie, you! Oh, you know. This is the worst day to climb a rock. <laughs> I'm just gonna bleed all over it. Well, I know there's too much information, but this is the reality. <laughs> I have a lot of cramps. All right, so the, ticket, the tickets are 20,000 pesos, which is probably about like $5. So we can get our tickets first. So this is 740 steps. So it, should, it shouldn't be too hard for me, I'm hoping. So we're gonna start now. It's a nice little workout. It's very cool today. It's actually chilly. It's good stepping weather. Already out of breath. The record time for going up it is four, four minutes, but it usually takes like 15 minutes. Okay. At the top. I don't want to see anything. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so this is a uh, Michelada con mango, and it is a concoction of uh, mango, beer, salt, salt, salt yeah. and lime. Goodness, yeah. Have you ever heard of Lithuania before? See? Yeah, no. See? Yeah. Yeah. It's in the next to England, no? Uh, yeah. <laughs> What Very salty, salty rim. rim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What can you do in the climate? Yeah? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I'm way too busy for my life. An actual Disney book. Yeah, I'll be right there. <laughs> Speak. This town is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> He's just coming on it. So I'm just one of I'm just one of these guys. <laughs> And uh, caffeine just overstimulated. Just some days are bad, bad and some days are. Hard. It just, I, it just, I forget. It has an effect on me. And then my clothes are too tight. I just get. I don't really know how to describe any of this, but I mean, never want to show this to anyone. But it happens to me often. I just don't document it. I don't tell people. I don't show anyone. That's why I like to have my alone space so I can process this stuff by myself. Because this is for anyone else. This is what happens to me, and it's nobody else's fault. And it's not that I should stop doing something because I've chosen this. But and I don't want people to accommodate me. I don't want people to be like, oh, like what's going on in there? Like I just want to be normal, and I don't want to feel like this. Sometimes people don't understand like why I spend so much time inside because I can't handle going outside. Sometimes it goes away. It does, and I forget that, but it does. And it's okay. I wanted to show this because this is just as real as going out and having adventures. And probably tomorrow I'll be good again. And this is just how I operate. So this is a bit later, a little bit later. I changed my clothes, which really helped. And what really helps me is um, kind of like I've learned meditation and stuff like that, and it's helped so much. Sometimes it's hard to do in the moment. Not the most functional today. So the reason that I wanted to show you guys me in a state like this is because I don't show it. And I am conflicted with YouTube of what to show and what not to show. Um, I used to show too much, you know, I want to be, I want to keep my dignity, you know what I mean? Like, but in me saying and telling you guys, hey, I have autism and ADHD, 
I feel like I'm obligated to show you the times when I'm really struggling because I don't want you to think that it doesn't affect my life. You know, I just said it once and then move along. But no, it affects my life every single day. And it has in my past every single day. And it's fucked a lot of things up. Uh, I don't know how to to talk about it because I feel, I don't feel as, well, yeah, I feel a little ashamed about it. It's really fucked up things in my life and social interactions and relationships. And I feel a lot of shame about it, I think. I don't want to exploit this and I deal with it on my own. And that's how I want it. And it feels very too vulnerable for me to share that. Sometimes the answer is to wear looser clothing, not take too much caffeine, uh, rest, but also, you know, I think what would really help is if I had some animals to pet today. So that's just that's just part of the travels for me, the timid traveling. That's why there's it's the timid traveling because whether I'm confident or not, it's still a timid type of time. Just because I don't know when I'm gonna just not be able to handle things. That's why I'm very grateful for having my own space here and Wi-Fi artist program, links below, has been so amazing. Um, amazing people. Even if you have problems and struggles, you can still travel. That's what I'm trying to say. And even if you don't have autism or you're not neurodivergent, I know that people out there still have hidden struggles that they, you know, don't support. Update on my eyebrows. They're peeling. In case you wondered why they look like that, they are peeling. Sometimes I get scared of relationships in general because I don't want anyone to see this part. I've only really had one real relationship that I let somebody in for it and they destroyed me. So I haven't had anyone close since then. And uh, yeah, everything's pretty terrifying in that regard, but that's why I like to do solo things now. We broke into the pool because we're badass. There's like a huge chain on it and she just took some pliers and cut it. It's really crazy, but we're here now. So hopefully we don't get in trouble. I put on a hat. I'm like in my socks. No, it's perfect temperature. It's okay. It's like it's a, it's a bathing suit skirt. Are you a good swimmer? Oh well, yeah. If they try and catch us, we just swim in there. They won't come after us because they probably didn't bring their waters. <laughs> yeah, they probably didn't bring their bathing suits. <laughs> Kicked out of the pool not for breaking in, but because she's not wearing a swimming cap. So you have to wear a swimming cap. But we're, we're allowed to sit in the chair. We're not even allowed to wade in the water without a swimming cap. Oh, fucking hell. You okay? I'm all right. It's just very hot. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> we're just going to soak up the sun until the clouds come out, which they're meant to come out and like... Yeah, I was going to say, we don't need to go swimming. The rain will get us wet. That's true, actually. <laughs> they're all like, can we come swimming too? <laughs> no caps, no can. You can't go in without a cup. I don't know what you're talking about. A cup. Put a cap on. I don't have one of those. Can I just sit here? With my legs? In the water? No, you cannot do that. We have very strict policy here. But he probably does this the whole day. <laughs> this is probably just what his job the title is. Cap Commander. <laughs> <laughs> the national sport of Colombia is called Tejo. And it's basically kind of like a comparison would be like cornhole. So you throw something and then if you hit it right, it explodes, which is kind of a cool national sport. So we're at this local place to play it. And they sell beers as well. And um, we're going to play Tejo. All right, everybody. I'm going to be a lady. Right, yeah. First things first, welcome to Tejo in Medellin. My name is Chris, or El Gringo. Tejo, this is the national sport of Colombia. It's not soccer or football, depending on where you're from. Um, the reason why there's a gringo teaching you the national sport of Colombia is because I had the idea to do it first. <laughs> the real reason is I'm the only gringo that competes in the sport in the world. I'm also the only foreigner that's a certified trainer of the sport. That doesn't really mean much, but the fact is I have a little credibility in this sport. These are the explosive packages. Whatever team lands closest to the ring, the team gets one point. Even if three of you are closest, it's still only one point. Okay, you don't want to smoke around this. It's very dangerous <laughs> to blow up. So be careful. Just kidding. 
It's an actual iguana. Like just out here eating things. Iguanas can live up to 20 years in captivity. And they like humid, hot places. They're not generally dangerous to um, people, but I didn't expect them to be just loose around the area. So I'm so excited, so happy. This is a moment for me. The little dinosaurs. <laughs> so another fact about iguanas is they're excellent swimmers, and they they eat their herbivores. So they eat plants, and um, they are awake during the day. Little dinosaurs everywhere. Yeah. Didn't even expect so many iguanas. I haven't shown much of the currency here, but this is this is five million pesos. Cinco. So it's five millions about. Like, so just over a dollar to see the butterflies. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are in the butterfly garden. It's misty. There's a butterfly. Amazing. So it started pouring down rain. Um, so we're kind of stuck here. So we're just gonna get some, something quick to eat. But we want to go back to El Poblado and get something there. But for now, it's very wet. The thing about the weather here is that during the day it gets really hot, but then. If you get rained on or when it gets towards the evening, it gets very like cold because of the rain. So um, we're saying that it doesn't matter what outfit you wear, it's it's not going to work for the weather here. Here nachos, nachos on guacamole, and limonada. Limonada. Sí, yeah, natural. Sí. Gracias. Gracias. This is the limonadas which is, I think, what, coconut water? Coconut, yeah. coconut water and lime. Yeah. It's so good. Got completely stuck in the rain. Soaked. <laughs> We've got this random tent to stand under. Really? <laughs> the one thing I'm very excited about is I finally got a stick. I found this bamboo stick at the botanical garden. I just took it, and uh, it's really, it's really straight and really great. I was telling you, it's a beautiful stick. So I'm so happy about that. But we're gonna go to an actual restaurant now. Supposedly, this is Peruvian, Peruvian food. So this is ceviche, and this is the vegetarian version of it. But I'm gonna end this vlog here because it's gotten very long. Thank you so much for letting me be vulnerable with you. There's ups and downs in life, and I think it's appropriate to show, well, obviously my channel is about showing a lot of the downs. Anyways, stay extraterrestrial, stay tuned for the next video. I love you very much and I'll see you later.